And I, I can't keep saying it enough. Your job is not to answer the phone and send an email. Like, that's your job, to recognise that. Because that guy leaves the clinic thinking, I was listened to, if I was listened to, I was recognised. If I was recognised, I was significant. Where have we heard all this before? Where do people go back to? Places that they feel significant. <music>
Like, did you just say that? Like, who speaks like that? Nobody. But if you do, that's how you make that connection with them. So your goal in these in these treatment rooms or in reception is not to force a conversation, not like, I don't want to talk about weather, I don't want to talk about nothing like that. But if a client comes in and I can see that that is genuinely the default, not the stereotypical. The stereotypical one is when they don't know what else to talk about, so they talk about the weather or bad news. That's just because they're uncomfortable starting a good news conversation. But if a guy comes in and he's lost his wife and you know, whatever, you're not gonna go, oh, well, you know, let's, let's talk about bloody Louis Walsh or whatever. Like the goal is to listen to that because if you do, you get the cocktail effect where it was uncomfortable for you, but it was wonderful for him or her. And then he goes away that day thinking, wow, like what a cool place that is and what a really nice guy that guy is because he listens to everything that I say. What's the number one thing that, that people don't do anymore is listen. <laughs>
This is not uncomfortable, this is just them thinking. This is me asking a question that goes to a part of the brain that they're not used to asking. They're so used to the, how was your day? Not bad. What you been up to? Not much. You enjoying the weather? Well, you know, got to make the most of it while it lasts. By asking something where you're having to engage, it starts, it, sh it comes across that you're a lot more interested. I, I was talking to a client on the way on last night and he's like, sorry, you okay, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm on my own for tea. So that, my next question to him was, what's your favourite tea? What's your favourite tea of all time? What would you love to turn up to now and your wife have on the table? <gasps> what my dream tea? And we, it's just a different, it actually requires thinking and it shows that you might actually give a shit. Clients don't know when you haven't. I've said this for years. Clients don't know when you haven't asked that question, but they recognise when you do. So I, like James is in another level of thinking. So the average client is not thinking is asking me this question or you're asking every client this question. There's not a chance that 99.9% .9 of this world are thinking like that. Like James is because he's, he, he, he's aware of it, but your typical client isn't. So they don't, they don't recognize it or they don't know when you haven't asked that question, but they sure as hell feel it when you do. That's the difference. That took me a while to get used to when we were doing all this stuff with Vicky and when we first started it, even before you came in with Kim and Lauren and people like that. When we started doing all these questions and asking stuff, I used to get mad when people didn't ask the question because I was like, the client will feel like the client will know we haven't. And then I realized as I studied it more, they don't know when you haven't asked it. You've just missed an opportunity to make them feel great by asking it because they're so ingrained and entrenched in these stereotypical crappy, yes, no, how's your day? Well, you've, like you walk through that town centre, like I sit there in the morning in Costa, and it's, um, you're all right, got to be having you. It's what they do. Every morning. Every morning I hear that phrase <laughs> in Hartlepool. Every single morning. Not bad. Yeah. How's you, uh, how, how are you going? Surviving. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair to me, Lee. Yeah. yeah. Got, to, got to be having you. That's the, that's, the, that's the best one. That sums up life. That sums up 99.9% .9 of people's lives. Like, when you're verbally admitting to got to be having you or um, surviving, well, you know, nobody else gives a shit, so whatever. Like, it's, it, it, and again, it's like, it's been, <laughs> this is what the funniest bit is. The guy you asked the questions actually like really positive. Hey, how's it going? Well, surviving, you've got to have not yet. And then, and then he goes, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 you've got to survive, haven't you? And yeah, you've got to be, haven't you? So let's all just get on and like, you know, then, then the spark that, like the tiniest bit of spark that it took him all morning to get that energy to ask that question is now gone. And the chances of him having that energy again are like deflated. So his next question will be, tomorrow, still surviving? <laughs> got to have you. Got to have you. You know, with clients, you, you've got to recognise it and see it. And that's part of the skill of dealing with that type of client. And um, not getting sucked into it. I've said this many a time, and this is the really important point. If you get a client who, who is negative, you have to be so self-aware of the impact that has upon you and then the next client. Because if you get someone this morning who calls up who's a bit negative and a bit like of an ass for want of a better word, or not even an ass, just came across as one, two totally different things. Came across as, well, she sounded miserable. That might just be the way she is. And then when she arrives in here in person, she could be the one, you know, most wonderful person on earth. And we've had that where clients have booked appointments and everyone's like, Vicky said it to me many times, well, I, he in person was completely different to what he or she was on the phone. What you're doing is you're making a snap judgment on somebody without understanding their situation, which is nervous, frightened, skeptical. That's the default mode of most people today walking around this world. They're about to buy a grudge purchase that they don't want. They've been forced to buy because they fell over, crashed a car. Somebody's done something to them. They've been lazy and done whatever and they've hurt their back. Like they do not want to be speaking to us and they do not want to be giving us money and they do not want to be giving us three hours of their time every week. So forgive them if they're not overly like happy to be calling you. <laughs> like, but again, that's the skill. So you can do one of two things, take it personally and go, oh, this guy's just a miserable whatever. This guy is arrogant. This guy isn't, he's none of that. He does not want to be in this situation. And if we clash with him, he'll stay that way. If we prejudge him, he'll stay that way. If we give him every opportunity to be who he probably would love to be and grow in this environment where we're gonna be nice and friendly and happy and um, encourage him to you know, do whatever, you might just see him change.
he can go and be whoever else he wants to be with somebody else he's doing business with but then when he comes back in here he, he likes coming here because he's in a happy place he feels right he hasn't got a clue any of this is going on but it but it is so that's again something to factor in you're dealing with people at the beginning of a relationship who are not wanting to be here secondly in pain thirdly frustrated because they have to do this and they don't want it there's nothing worse than having to pay for your help it's the most horrible thing isn't it like even going to the dentist it just pisses you off you'd rather give 500 quid to the car mechanic than the dentist it's up to you you'll have a nicer time if you understand them and you see where they're coming from and you get underneath them with everything from the negative guy to the abrupt guy on the phone to somebody who's like well that guy's a bit whatever it's not it's nothing to do with you and it's nothing to do with like the situation it's it well it is the situation is the, is the is the thing they're in a situation that they don't want to be in they're confused by there's no guarantee at the end of it that's what that's what it is and they also expect you this is the real 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 reason why they start negative they also expect you to be like the last medical person that they spoke to in Chadwick House or some other crappy doctor's surgery where it's nothing but a number. Mr. Goff, yes, we'll see you at 9.40. Like, press the buzzer when you arrive. If you're lucky, the doctor will look at you. He will probably keep his head down, stare at his desk, write you a script and you'll walk out. This is the difference between somebody who just answers the phone for a living and replies to an email and somebody who can connect with people like like there's another level.